Good morning, church. How's everybody today? It's great to see you guys. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Let's open in prayer. Father God, thank you for being here with us this morning. We just ask your blessing on this service, Lord, and be with us as we lift your name high. We love you and we praise you. Amen. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry long as I know everything I need you've got is honey in the rock praying for a miracle thirsty for the living well only you can satisfy sweetness at the mercy seat now taste it See, only you can satisfy. There's honey in the rock. 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 Freedom where the spirit is. Bounty in the wilderness. You will always satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, bed on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry long as I know. Everything I need you've got is honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is done. Everything you did seemed rough. I keep looking, I keep finding. Keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying, you keep moving. I keep praising, you keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep looking, I keep finding. You keep giving. stone man on the ground no matter where i go i don't need to worry long as i know everything i need you've got there's honey in the rock purpose in your plan power in the blood healing in your hands started flowing when you said it is done jesus who you are is enough there's honey in the rock there's honey in the rock in you Jesus oh how sweet how sweet it is to trust in you Jesus oh how sweet how sweet it is to trust in you Jesus Oh, I'm up. <laughs> hey, good morning, Calvary Chapel. How's everybody doing? Bless, bless, bless. Amen. What a beautiful day out, huh? Hey, just real quick, I know Pastor Greg will touch more on it, but what a blessing yesterday. We had a great time out at the park. I'll leave more to him to speak on that, but what a blessing. Amen. Hey, just a few reminders. Uh, blessed and be blessed food uh, ministry. They're doing their... Uh, clothing soft goods collection uh the end date is september 3rd so if you have any donations bring them to the church see miss patty um and we'll get you dialed in and we appreciate your do your donations agape way nine four so september 4th so that's next weekend the long memorial or labor weekend 
Uh, that's on a Monday. There's a movie, chili dogs, chips, uh, all kinds of good fun. So get plugged into that if you're available. Women of the Word introduction kickoff. So I encourage you women, if you haven't signed up for that, to uh, get signed up and, and get involved in that. It should be a good teaching. Women of Integrity. Uh, it's once a month DVD series, third Thursday of each month. Uh, so that puts it September 21st of next month. Um, and Blessed and Be Blessed Food Ministry, third Friday of each month. As a, just a, another reminder, phone number is in the bulletin. Please call, get yourself an appointment. Prayer meeting, uh, that will be canceled for next, uh, in, uh, the month of September. A lot of other things going on, so we're just going to push that back, and we'll resume it in October. Amen? Amen. Be still, men's retreat. Amen. You stout-hearted men, sign-ups are out by the lobby. If you have trouble uh, finding them, let me know. I'll get you there. Um, it should be a really, really good time. I know last year, man, I, I know I've talked about it 100 times up here. It was a blessing. Amen. Yo to yourself. Amen. Right share ministry. Uh, see Brother Todd. Uh, for more information on that, but basically if you're uh, available to give rides, help people out that want to be here, but for you know, whatever reasons can't get here, you may be able to help them uh, be here with the, with the body. Amen? Amen? Hospital ministry. Um, anybody in need? Um, see our brother Todd. Get with myself. Pastor Greg will get you in the right direction. Anybody that needs ministering, you know, praying, you know, at the, at the hospital if they're, uh, you know, up there... Uh, getting treated by those brave and talented souls. Amen. Prayer at Harupa Valley Sheriff Station, Thursdays, outside by the flagpole, 9 to 9.30. As Pastor Greg so kindly and, and elegantly uh, mentioned it last week, it's the good-looking group by the flagpole, so you can't miss them. <laughs> Amen. I caught that. <laughs> Amen. So if you're available for that, we'd love to have you out there. You know, praying for those brave souls, you know, put themselves at risk every day when they show up to work, right? Amen. They never know what their day is going to be like. Some of us have an idea when we go to our job, but every day is just a new total adventure to them. So pray for them, please. Amen. And with that being said, let us pray before our tithes and offerings, shall we? Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for you, dear Lord. We are grateful to be here. Oh, in your house of worship, dear Lord, to give you the glory, the honor, oh, and just to glorify you in your name, dear Lord. We are just so thankful for this church. Thank you for this leadership, Pastor Greg, the fellowship, the worship. The list goes on, dear Lord. You are an amazing God. We thank you. We love you. And all God's children say, yeah. amen. Thank you very much. Father, bring new wine out of all of us because we know that you, you are enough and you are the, the fulfillment of everything that we wish for, that we pray for. Anoint Pastor Greg today as he brings forth uh, your word and write that in our hearts. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. What a blessing, man. Another great day in Southern California. That's why we live here, because it's a great day. Amen? Wow. Hey, we had an absolute blast. Uh, the young people are dismissed. I'm sorry, young people are dismissed. And, and follow, uh, follow Connie out. And, and, and so, hey, yeah, we had a great time yesterday. We had a small army serving a small army. And it was just great. And so thanks to Julian and his crew and uh, months of planning just came to a complete successful we, we couldn't have asked for anything better we just had a blast an abundance of food some great cooks great worship great time of prayer i mean the prayer uh, table was just humming man wow and it was great and so really the lord was really moving uh, the several young people from the skateboard park showed up and uh, they got the word, and so Julian and myself, yeah, and Julian, myself, and Todd, we, you know, we were able to, to embrace these young people, both boys and girls, and they just loved it. And we, you know, we, we threw hot dogs to them, you know, and, and kept them entertained, and, and Julian was just making snow cones and throwing them out, and, and those young guys and gals, they had a great time, and, and the water sports were great. 
I was threatened a couple of times that I was going to get soaked, but I kept pulling out my, my phone and said, I'm taking pictures, so don't shoot me. You know, so that worked pretty well. That worked pretty good. Uh, you know, that was, that was the Lord. I didn't plan for that at all, you know, so. But it was just great. So thanks to the Lord and thanks to Calvary Harupa Valley for prayer, finances, and just showing up and serving the city of Harupa Valley. And that's our function right now, and that's our, our vision right now uh, for the next uh, year to two years is local. That's the word the Lord gave me, local. You know, there's plenty of ministries everywhere you want to go. You know, you can go to Mexico or Hawaii or anything like that, and it's all, it's all great. But for us right now, the word from the Lord is local, and it was evidenced uh, yesterday uh, in the local outreach. And so it was just wonderful. So we planted a lot of seeds and such, and it was just fabulous. Secondly, uh, Thomas uh, has been taking his hikes, and many of you have been engaged in the hikes with Thomas. And uh, in those hikes, he he has several uh, stones, smooth stones that he paints. And uh, yeah, there you go that he paints, and, and there's a painting on there, and, and the script, and, and saying that Jesus loves you on this rock, and the, and the colors are brilliant. I mean, you can see these stones from just, you know, <laughs> I want to say miles away, but you know, that's an exaggeration, but these stones are great. It says, Jesus loves you, and then we've been slipping Calvary Chapel business cards underneath those stones, and so I came in this morning checked the answering machine and there was a gal said hey I'm so and so my family and I we, we just came down from Mount Rubido we found your stones we found your business card and we want to just call you and just say thanks and thanks for reminding us that Jesus loves us you know and so they left a great message so man the Lord is moving locally and that's where he wants he wants us to be so continue to pray for this city the city of Harupa Valley and of course the surrounding areas But we get the idea. We get the point. So what a blessing. God is moving. And like Pastor Chuck used to always say, find out where the Lord's pouring out his blessing and stand right under that faucet. And so that's what we're going to do. We we have found that faucet, and so we're going to stand right underneath it. Amen? So in the meantime, let's hold them high. What a blessing. We gave you some brand new songs this morning, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. We'll be learning them more and more. Praise the Lord. I believe this is the perfected word of God. I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I desire not only to read it, to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it. Amen? The power of God's Holy Spirit. And with that, join me in Mark chapter 1. The Gospel of Mark. Chapter 1. What a blessing. Now, we remember last time in chapter 1 and verse 10, and I'll just review, and of course you can follow along, in chapter, in, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 10, and immediately coming up from the water, John saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon Jesus like a dove. Verse 11, a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And in review in verse 9, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Now, Jesus, the name Jesus, is just a commoner's name. I mean, it's, it's not a unique name at all. Jesus, or Joshua, was a very common name. Secondly, Galilee, we see here in verse 9, Jesus came from from Galilee. Galilee was not a resort destination for the surrounding areas. Galilee was frowned down upon. In fact, if you you were from Galilee, you were sort of shied away from. We remember the the comment, does anything good come from Galilee? (laughs) And so Galilee was, again, just a down in the dumps kind of town. So a common name, Jesus, coming from a, you know, a 
town, an area actually that was low income, if you will. Within Galilee, Jesus grew up in the city of Nazareth. Again, not a town that had a lot of renown to it at all. Eventually, Jesus' home ministry office was established in Capernaum. Likewise, like Nazareth, a city in the county of Galilee. So all these things here, the Jesus' name, his home territory, and whatnot, very common, commoner things. I mean, if, it was, if the Lord would have asked you or I, hey, Jesus is coming, coming to the earth to minister, where do you want him to, to hang out? Well, we'd immediately give him an address in, in Brentwood or Beverly Hills, right? That's what you and I would do. That's what we would do. But no, but Jesus was in these very low-income areas, if you will, very common areas. Jesus, the God-man, poured into a human body, and not just a human body, but can you, can you imagine for a moment, Jesus, the God-man, was poured into a baby's body. I mean, a baby. What does a baby have to offer? Nothing. A baby has an offer of feed me and feed me now. Change me and do it now. That's what a baby offers. I mean, an, another, but in other words, a, a baby has to be cared for every moment of the day. Every moment of the day. This, this is Jesus, Jesus, the God-man, not only pouring himself into a human body. I mean, in a way, we could sort of relate to it, perhaps, you know, if he was, if he was the 30-year-old man that we, we've grown to know and grown to love, but, you know, able to take care of himself, able to make decisions. But he poured himself into a baby's body. That's incredible. I mean, we've got to let that penetrate into our mind. Jesus had to be cared for. Jesus, the God-man, the God-man baby, had to be cared for. Had to. Had to be cared for. Unbelievable. Speaking of Jesus, the God-man poured into a baby's body, well, he was, he was born, of course, born in a sheep pen. Again, if we were asked or consoled or asked to counsel, well, we'd, we'd definitely have Jesus being birthed at you know, down at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach, right? Certainly. And then we'd scoot them on up to Malibu and kind of hang out there for a bit. I mean, these are, the, these are the things, these are the answers we would give. But Jesus here is born in a sheep's pen. And again, when we take a minute, hey, a sheep's pen? Oh, definitely it was filled with animal dung. Yeah. We're familiar with that. I mean, those of us that have horses and animals, you know, I've got four dogs. That's like having one big horse, trust me. I mean, I ask myself every time I'm out there sweeping things up for the third time of the day, I'm thinking, what was I thinking? Animal dung everywhere. This is where Jesus, the, the God-man baby, was born in a sheep pen covered in animal dung. Oh, it doesn't end there. Jesus, the God-man baby, wrapped with strips of cloth, which we can imagine replaced his heavenly garments. His heavenly garments replaced with strips of cloth. Man, Lord, help us burn this into our brain and pull it up regularly. Jesus Christ, our humble Savior. Unbelievable. Hard for our imagination to reproduce often, but we need to allow that to happen. And so after Jesus' water baptism by John the Baptist, after the Holy Spirit publicly descends upon our Savior, 
after the verbal approval of God the Father is heard, Jesus now, after 30 years, begins his public ministry in the territory of the lower Galilee. Father, we thank you so much for painting this picture. In fact, we ask you to burn this picture into our minds. Burn this picture into our hearts. Jesus, our humble Savior, a common man, but yet we know not common at all. Common appearance, common pedigree, perhaps maybe just even consider a, a regular guy. Not anybody that stood out of the crowd, but yet when he opened his mouth, all that changed. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for allowing Jesus to be born amongst us. I mean, being born, we thank you, Jesus, for being born in a place like the city of Harupa Valley. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us our Savior that we can relate to him. He's not a standoffish Savior. He is somebody that stands right next to us and is willing to have conversation with us. And for that, Lord, we thank you. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Father and Holy Spirit. Teach us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Shortly after the baptism of Jesus, we pick up in verse 14. John the Baptist was put in prison. And Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. We remember this word, the gospel. Jesus was preaching the good news of the kingdom of God being at hand. That's good news. That's the gospel. That is good news. So Jesus came, came preaching. I mean, he was baptized with, with the rest of the group. I mean, we could have all been there. You know, it would have been very easily uh, happening that you and I would be at the Jordan while Jesus was being baptized likewise. likewise. I mean, that, that could be a very common possibility. So Jesus is baptized in the Jordan, and he then begins preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. You and I... We speak and we teach the good news. As we sang this morning, go tell. Go tell the good news. Don't worry about how people respond to it. Don't be embarrassed by it. You say, hey, man, I just want to let you know about the good news. Jesus Christ died but rose again. And the kingdom of God is near. And this was literal when Jesus was saying, hey, the kingdom of God is here. This is God, Jesus, the God-man, saying, hey, the kingdom of God is here. There's a, there's a, a ring of, of absolute, of course, truth to that. You say, hey, the kingdom of God is near. Hey, hey, John, the kingdom of God is near. Hey, folks on the, the banks of the Jordan, the kingdom of God is near. I mean, Jesus knew what he was saying. I'm here. The kingdom of God is represented in me, and I'm near to you. The kingdom of God is accessible, is what Jesus was saying. He wasn't turning anyone away or shunning anyone. He said, hey, the kingdom of God is here, and it's, that's good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. And I'm certain all those many people on the banks of the Jordan, I'm certain that somebody would have had to say, just like the, 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 the prisoners in the prison, when the prison gates flung open in the book of Acts we saw months ago. I'm sure somebody on the, the banks of, those, of, of the Jordan River had to say, well, what must I do to receive the kingdom of God? Because since, since it's at hand, what do I need to do to receive it? And of course, Jesus says, well, you repent. You turn from your current Lifestyle. That's all repentance means. You just turn. We love our ministry, U Turn for Christ. Wonderful ministry. Sam takes a, takes a band down there often, and we play great music and, and teach a, 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 a message uh, every, every other month, something like that throughout the year. So we're down at U Turn for Christ five, six, seven times a year. 
In fact, the annual pig roast is coming up. It's a great time, man. Fellowship, great music, and all the barbecued pig you can handle. Man, now that's, that's a day for you right there. But Jesus is saying, hey, you simply turn from your current activity. You repent, and then the second, so that's the first thing you do. You repent, and then you believe in the good news. You receive the good news. You believe in the gospel. So there's a process there. You repent, you admit, hey, I fall short. And I need to change my ways. It's a simple thing. But man, pride comes in and says, well, I don't want to believe in this fairy tale or whatever. whatever, However the human brain works. But that doesn't hinder us here at Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. We keep bringing the good news. We keep bringing those stones and say, Jesus loves you and put a phone number on it. And people know how they can get in touch with us. And we'll guide them like we do every day of our lives. So what must I do to be saved? Well, you need to repent, and then you need to believe in the message that I'm preaching, Jesus was saying. That's what you need to do. So Jesus has done everything. Now we have to respond. And so that was the message. And in verse 16, And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother. And these two boys were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. These were hard-working guys. I mean, the Holy Spirit is telling us here, these guys, these fishermen, they're working hard under the blazing sun. And you know how it is, is many of us go out into the lake and enjoy a pleasure pleasure cruise or whatnot when that sun hits the water on the lake man it it magnifies those rays and we end up being sunburned and everything else and we go home that night to go take a shower and start washing our head and all of a sudden we go woohoo right you got about three layers of burned skin on that skull and we've been learning to Put on a hat, and I, I'm like the last hat wearing guy in the world, but man, I've learned. I gotta put on a hat. <laughs> there you go, Frankie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It works, doesn't it, bro? <laughs> it works. <laughs> but these guys, they were fishermen. They exposed themselves to the elements. They didn't complain, they didn't cry. They got out there in the middle of the lake and they worked and they worked hard. And so Jesus walks by these just regular guys. Regular guys, fishermen, hard-working fishermen. And so Jesus walks by Simon and Andrew, these brothers. And in verse 17, Jesus says to them, Hey, fellas, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. And I'm sure Simon and Andrew are looking at each other. What are, what are fishers of men? We know, how to, we know how to catch fish. But what is this new term that, that has been coined? I'll make you fishers of men. And so out of curiosity, I mean, they're just asking one another, what, what's up? But their response was they immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. They were touched. They were moved by God the Holy Spirit, and they left their nets and followed Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. They knew. His reputation was becoming more known throughout Galilee. So they left their nets immediately and followed him. They, they didn't think about it. Well, you know, should we finish the day? Or, you know, we haven't quite caught our bounty now mark is quick to underline here immediately once they heard heard those words from rabbi jesus of nazareth they immediately left their nets and followed him they were invited to come join jesus and they said man i'm not missing this opportunity 
today's the day. Today's my day. Andrew, is it your day? Yes, it is. Simon, is it your day? You bet. Let's go. It's our day. And they jumped at the opportunity. In verse 19, when Jesus had gone a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, who was with John, his brother, who also were in the boat mending their nets. Again, these hard-working guys, these hard-working men. Here's James, John, and their dad, Zebedee. Now, you might want to put a little footnote to yourself over the next week or so, a couple of days. When you study the person James, you're going to find three different men, three totally different men, and I really suggest that you acquaint yourself with the Jameses in the Old Testament because it can get rather confusing. You can be thinking that you, there's one James and all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I thought James was doing this, but now I find him over here doing that. But then we realize that's a different James. And then when we think we got the two guys figured out, then we think, well, wait a minute, James number one is here, James number two is here. Well, who's this other guy? Who's this other brother of Jesus named James? Who's that guy? So I really recommend you take a couple of minutes, take an hour, and do a New Testament study of the New Testament man James. You'll find three different guys. So here we're introduced to James, the son of Zebedee. Well, since he's the son of Zebedee, he's certainly not the brother of Jesus, is he? That would be kind of a unique scenario. But James, our first James here, is the son of Zebedee, the brother of John. We remember the sons of thunder, right? So take a little name study when you get a chance of the New Testament James, and you'll find these men, all great, wonderful men. And then there's just like they are the, the trinity of James. <laughs> Three different guys. So again, it'll help you iron out some potential confusion. You want to just nip that right off right away. So here, Jesus picks up Simon and Andrew, goes down the, the shore of the Sea of Galilee, sees James and John who were also in the boat mending their nets in verse 20, Jesus immediately likewise called them. So here Jesus is hanging out with Simon and Andrew, calls James and John, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and they went after Jesus. So here are these two couples, these two brothers, these Simon and, Andrew, Simon and Andrew and James and John, these brother teams, immediately join Jesus. So these hardworking guys, these regular guys, these regular Joes, invited to join Jesus, and they were smart enough to immediately join Jesus by his side. Fabulous stuff. Then these, this group of five they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught so Capernaum like Nazareth is another town in the county of Galilee so Capernaum and eventually we'll see that Jesus kind of made made Capernaum if you will his ministry headquarters if you will so here they're by by the Sea of Galilee, they made their way to the city of Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. This was a very common practice. When there was a visitor, oftentimes, and had some sort of a pedigree that was identifiable, that visitor would often be asked, to, hey, would you like to come and teach? Would you like to come into the synagogue on Sabbath and share with us? We'd love to hear from you. 
You know, it's always fun to have a guest speaker, isn't it? I mean, we love, you know, the, the folks that we know, but it's nice now and again just to have somebody totally different. It's, it's fun. You know, they have a different presentation. They have a different personality. And it's fun. And so that was the idea here throughout the traditions of the, the synagogue. Hey, when, there, when we can have a guest speaker, we'd like to have a guest speaker. And so he entered the synagogue and was encouraged, invited, hey, come on up and teach. He's great. So he enters the synagogue and teaches. In verse 22, Jesus was teaching and the congregation were astonished at his teaching. I mean, they were just flattened. Wow, who is this guy? They were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority. Oh, he, he didn't teach like the scribes. Now, what does this mean? They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught as one having authority, not, not as the scribes. Let's be reminded here, up until John the Baptist, prior to John the Baptist, there were 400 years of silence after Malachi finished his letter. Once the Lord was done with Malachi, God didn't speak for another 400 years. God didn't speak through it. There was no prophets. There was no message. 400 years of silence. And so what does that do? I mean, so the scribes, for the last 400 years, they're just trying to figure out what to say. I mean, they, they of course, had the Torah and things like that, but they didn't have any kind of fresh revelation. 400 years. Can you imagine? I mean, four generations. God's not spoken a word. I mean, not that he needs to, but yet the scribes, they didn't know how to, how to handle that. They, they were just sort of guessing and drawing straws and things. They had no authority whatsoever. They didn't have the confidence. They had not spent that time with Jehovah God. And so from Malachi to John the Baptist, silence. Then John broke that silence. John the Baptist broke that silence and people were starting to, to come around a little bit and now Jesus comes in and teaches with all authority. How did you, why did Jesus speak with all authority? Because he is the authority. He was the word, John told us. And John reminded us that the word became flesh. So here's God in the flesh speaking in the synagogue. Of course he speaks with authority because he is the word. What a blessing. And people immediately, they recognize that. They say, whoa, Nellie. This is nothing like we've ever heard in our lives. I got to admit to you, when I was a, being raised in my family, I was brought to a denominational church. I mean, we didn't miss the services, and I mean it. Especially around, th especially around Easter and Christmas, we certainly didn't miss that service. No way. Because we didn't want to go to hell. And man, I was scared to death. I thought, man, this God, he's mean. He's mad. And that's how I grew up. And when I was 13 years old and constantly just filled with this sort of fear, shaking in my boots, didn't know if I was coming or going, man, I was confused. But I'm walking around on a Friday night up in Ottawa, and I'm looking for something to do, and all of a sudden I hear this music coming out of the town hall. And I was pretty hip to what was going on in the music thing. I was just beginning to uh, become a musician and, and uh, kind of knowing what's going on. And I, I, I took, took pleasure in knowing the older musicians around town and things, and I knew when they were gigging and things like that. And I'm walking down by the town hall on a Friday night, and I'm thinking, I didn't know that any of the bands were playing tonight. How weird. Why didn't I know that? But yet that music drew me in. And I walked into the town hall in Idlewild in 1972, and all of a sudden here's this band playing Maranatha music. Right? And I mean, I was drawn in. And it was just nobody needed to explain it to me, but I just realized this is good. And that's exactly as Jesus was teaching, the people sat and just said, this is good. This is right. This is what has been missing in my life. 
That's what I said as a 13-year-old. This is what's been missing. And then when that long, blonde hair guy stood up, he, he had to be from Orange County because he had a, I'm saying to myself, he's got a Hawaiian shirt on <laughs> and a pair of OP shorts. Remember the OP shorts? I mean, you found a pair of OP shorts and, and you hung on to them, right? I mean, you know, to, to pay $20 for a pair of shorts, mom was like, you're crazy. You know, we don't pay $20 for a pair of shorts. So if you finagled a, a pair of OP shorts, man, you like held on to those things like nobody's business. But here he was, and he starts preaching the gospel, and I had no idea. I mean, I'd been under the roof of, you know, being beaten down year after year, month after month, and all of a sudden I heard this fresh message, and I said, I don't know what this guy's talking about, but it's right. I mean, I knew the name of Jesus. I knew this, that, and the other thing, but I'd never heard it presented like this. That's what Jesus did. He is presenting the kingdom of God to the sanctuary here, to the to, uh, to the, uh, the synagogue, and these people, they just lit up. They said, we've never heard this before, and we can relate. And some of us, I mean, when the Holy Spirit touched us in whatever way, all of a sudden we just realized this is right. And that's exactly what's going on in the synagogue. Jesus of Nazareth, the guest speaker, he began to speak, and everybody was in awe. They said, this is right. We've never heard of anything like that. We've never heard this this way. Oh, we've heard about the, the scriptures all of our lives, but we've never heard it presented like this with authority. That authority was the authority of God the Holy Spirit. Jesus speaking through the authority of God the Spirit. So for 400 years, that silence was broken, and it was broken being prepared by John the Baptist. And then when Jesus spoke, that silence was broken once and for all. And it'll, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. We don't want to. Some people want to, but it's too bad for them. They need to, re, they need to repent and believe in the gospel. That's all there needs to be done. That's it. So we just throw the seeds or we lay the rocks and the business cards. That's what we do. And then our job's done. We go out and worship the Lord in Agate Park. And we offer somebody a, a plate of food. But yet we love on people unconditionally and we invite them in. We give them waters and we give them an ear. We lay hands and we pray. That's what we do. We love on the people as they've been invited in. And so 400 years of silence broken, and man, the people were responding. Just said, wow. What's going on? I said, I don't know, but I want to follow this man. And now verse 23, there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. In other words, this man was demon-possessed. And the demon cried through the voice of this man. The demon cried out saying, let us alone. And isn't this fascinating? What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Hey, leave us alone. Did you come to destroy us? The question is asked of Jesus. I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. James tells us, the writer of the book of James, not James the son of Zebedee, <laughs> but James tells us even the demons believe and they tremble. The demons believe. This demon represents that, hey, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. This demon believed, but he didn't change. He had no ability to change, but th that sort of attitude is present in many of the people that you and I speak to. Oh, they know Jesus, but do they repent? Do they receive and do they believe? Sometimes people do, praise the Lord, but a lot of times they don't. And here this demon is saying, hey, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. 
But that's where it ends. Did you come to destroy us? And Jesus responds in verse 25. Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet and come out of him. That's fascinating to me. Jesus didn't say, well, hey, tell us what's on your mind. Speak up. Oh, stand up so we can all hear you. Speak in a language that we understand. No, he didn't say that at all. He said, shut it. Be quiet. You know what? I like that response. So the next time you hear something being whispered in your ear that you know is not of the Lord, you just say, hey, be quiet. I don't want to hear that. You don't have to do a dance or jump up and down or pull out your incense or anything. You say, you know what? Shut it down. Done. That's, that's all Jesus. I mean, wow. Be quiet. Hey, be quiet. Oh, and then as, you, as you're quiet, then come out of him. That's what Jesus' response was. Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed the man and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of, out of the man. He came out. I mean, that's Jesus. Jesus demonstrating his authority, demonstrating what the people they knew. They said, we've never heard, the, heard this like this. The, the scribes have never taught like this. But, so they knew. And then Jesus was punctuating that, saying, yeah, you're exactly right. Watch this. Because the people knew, and, you know, and that's fascinating. Here in the sanctuary was a demon-possessed man. Who are you here today, demon-possessed person? <laughs> really? I mean, that's fascinating to me. We've got to be on our toes. We've got to be using our discernment. We've got to have our spiritual eyes open. Here in the, in the synagogue, there was a demon-possessed man. And so up to this point, this demon-possessed man is fairly approachable because we don't have security. We don't have the ushers bringing this guy out or anything. So he's hanging out. That's kind of spooky to me. But that also reminds me, Lord, give me the discernment that I need to watch the gate of this sanctuary. And don't let me be talked out of anything, Lord God. I want to hear clearly from you. If I hear a voice that I, don't, that I know is not from you, I'm just going to tell that voice, be quiet. That's it. And that voice could come in my mind. It could come but from one of you lovely people. And I'm thinking, you know what? Be quiet. I mean, that's the truth of the matter. And I take my authority from this scripture. This demon-possessed guy was in the synagogue. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be quiet, come out of him, and he came out. Then in verse 27, the whole, the whole group here, they were all amazed. I mean, they're like, wow. First is teaching with authority, and now he commands this unclean spirit. I mean, we didn't even know that this guy was possessed. We had no idea. We always knew he might have been a little goofy or a little rambunctious, but man, we had no idea that he was possessed. I mean, he's been with us for months, been with us for years. In fact, he was you know, gave that $100 bill for the building foundation, you know, whatever. The building ministry. I mean, sure enough. But they were all amazed. And then they, they questioned among themselves, rightfully so, hey, what is this? We have never seen or heard of anything like this. What is this? What, is, what new doctrine is this? What new teaching is this? I mean, man, there's a lot of things being revealed to us today. Wow, this is a lot. And certainly Jesus is saying, yeah, I came to turn this synagogue right side up. And there's a lot of people here that aren't going to like that. But Jesus wasn't hindered by that at all. He said, oh no, I came to turn things right side up. Are you with me? Jesus is asking, basically. 
So certainly a few followed, but some just said, whoa, this is a lot for me to handle. I don't know. I don't know, man. This is not the way Grandpa used to do it. Hmm. So that's what you're going to hang on to. You're going to hang on to your tradition. Jesus will eventually start challenging. You're going to hang on to your tradition instead of the new wine. The new wine that we sang about this morning. What is this? What is this new doctrine? What is this new teaching we've never heard before? Like I walked into that town hall in 1972. What is this? But man, I knew it, whatever it was, I needed it. That's all I knew. And I didn't even know what I was really doing. I mean, I accepted Jesus, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. I had, to have, I had to be taught. I had to get into a strong fellowship, which was my downfall. I didn't get into a strong fellowship. It was available, but I just began to quickly fade away. That was my mistake. Poor choices on my part led me down a path of of destruction. Thankfully, the Lord kept his hand on me for those 20-plus years. But what is this new doctrine? What is this new teaching? For with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. He commands them, and they obey. He commands, you know. He commands them, and they obey him. I don't command any unclean spirit, never have, never will. I say, Jesus, would you mind taking care of this? Would you you handle that, Lord? I'm not going to come in the name of Jesus and say, in the name of Jesus, Greg tells you to come out of that man. I mean, that demon's going, ha, 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 ha. Paul the apostle I know. Jesus Christ I know, but who are you? I say, I'm nobody. So I just, I give it right to the Lord. Jesus, would you handle that? I'm with Michael the archangel. I'm not going to wrestle Satan for the body of Moses. I'm not going to wrestle. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord handle this. I'm staying out of the way. That's scary to be in the presence of an unclean spirit. It's happened to me once, and I'll tell you, I was just crying out to the Lord. I had every being in my body, Lord, strengthen me. Oh, believe me, I wanted to cut and run. But man, I, boy, Lord, strengthen me. Cement my feet right where they are and close my mouth. And I did, and the Lord overcame With authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately, verse 28, Jesus' fame spread throughout all the region of the county of Galilee, the whole surrounding area. As we've seen today, Jesus has done everything possible for you and I to receive him. He's done everything possible. He was baptized just like a regular guy. He came from a podunk town, if you will. I mean, a populated town, and certainly there was commerce and there was activity. But yet, it was just a, it was just a regular town. He didn't come from Jerusalem. He just came from a regular place. He was a regular guy. He was a carpenter. Just a regular guy. There were shouts surrounding him about his legitimacy. Oh, yeah. Mary got pregnant outside of wedlock. I'm certain of it. I mean, this is what, this is Jesus. We even go back, actually even to the first chapter of Matthew, and we look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Man, there's some questionable people in that family tree, aren't there? Hmm. But yet, Jesus demonstrating his humility and his desire to be able to relate with people. 
So he calls Simon and Andrew, Andrew. He calls James and John. And they realize, just as at his voice, they realize, man, we got to follow him. The brothers, John and James, Dad, are you good? Dad said, you guys go. You go. You young men, you go. This is your calling. Go. I'll maintain here. Oh, I've got the, I've got the, the hired hands. You guys run. Run to that man. Run to Rabbi Jesus. Go. And go now. And they said, thanks, Dad. And they ran. Jesus, our humble Savior, born in an obscure place. Bethlehem. What's that all about? Laid in a feeding trough. What? Yeah, that's our Savior. That's our humble Savior. As common as He could possibly be and offering and being relatable to any and everyone possible. That's our humble Savior, amen? If I could ask the worship team to come join me. A poem by Lyle C. Rowlings III goes as follows. The poem's titled, The Greatest Man in History. It starts out and reads, Jesus, he had no servants, yet they called him master. Jesus had no degree, yet they called him teacher. He had no medicines, yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. Oh, he won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He did not live in a castle, yet they called him Lord. He ruled no nations, yet they called him king. Committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. I feel honored to serve such a leader who loves us. That certainly capsulizes our thoughts and has brought them on paper and now brought them into our hearts. Amen. So, Father, as we worship you and Continue to bless you, Lord God, as you reveal yourself to us in such a mighty way as you do day in and day out. We are honored to serve you as our leader, the one who loves us. We bless you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening our spiritual eyes and realizing at that moment, I don't know what this is, but it's right. That was you, God, Holy Spirit. And we thank you once again for that reality. Put a check in our spirit this day, this week. Allow us to continue to reveal who you are. Not so much through our actions. Certainly we will, we will reveal. But let the city understand that we are Christians as demonstrated by our love then our activities will mean everything. Activities without love, Paul tells us, rubbish. So let love be first and foremost, and then let everything after that follow for your glory, for our benefit, and for certainly the benefit for those around us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us by standing. If you need prayer, we'll meet you over here to my left. Continue to use the prayer chain as you need it. Many people are, are being healed, and there's other people being added. So be sure to stay attentive to that and sensitive to that reality. And those with praise reports, like Mark would, would say, immediately bring those prayer, praise reports to the prayer chain. We would appreciate it. Hard working group. We like to hear some results now and again. So we're counting on you in that regard. Amen? Amen. 
Make it a love-filled week, revealing the precious and finished work of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Let's go out praising the Lord, shall we? Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos. You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries. But again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much, and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.